Hello everybody, welcome. Today we are going to start a new series about end games. All right, let me set up everything. Hello, hello Daksh. Hello yellow pain. Start my work from home from morning. Good morning to you. Hello Drifter Doda. Welcome everybody. So this is a serious serious series about end games. So I I want to train end games with you all and we will be going through the book by Mark Dovretsky, the Dovretsky's Endgame Manual, this book. And I would like to start from the very beginning. So these endgames are very important and very famous positions in this book. And also these are the endgames that we all should learn and understand. And this will help us to understand the game more. Yes, of course, we are going to do some serious training because I um, I wanted to do this on my own. I wanted to start this series on my own, but I thought that I will do it on the stream so that we can discuss positions and also train. Alright, so let us begin. Uh, we will start from chapter 1, which is Spawn and Games. So here in the introduction, uh, I will, I will, I'm going to go through this book. So let's go from the introduction. Chapter one is pawn and games. Pawn and games are very concrete. Even the tiniest change in the position generally alters the shape and outcome of the struggle. Here you can rarely get along on general principles. You must know how to calculate accurately. The study of pawn and games chiefly boils down not to memorization of exact positions, but to assimilation of standard techniques which considerably eases our search for a solution and calculation of variations. Many pawn endgames are clearly defined tempo battles. In these endgames, speed is everything. Which pawn will queen first? Will the king come in time to stop the passive pawn or get to the other side of board in time? And there are other pawn endings in which a maneuvering war predominates and which Zhuang assumes paramount importance. Uh, maneuvering and games are generally more complex than rapid ones, but we shall begin with them anyway in order to acquire the vital concept of corresponding squares. Then we shall switch to studying ideas involved in rapid end games before returning once again to maneuvering. So now we will begin with the key squares. So first they, uh, we have to understand what is key squares and then we will be looking at the positions on them. Yeah, this is the first position and here they have marked these squares c6 d6 and e6 and uh, key squares are what we call those squares which occupation by the king assures victory regardless of whose turn it is to move so we uh, already know the idea of a position so now we are going to try to understand what are key squares the d5 square on which the king now stands is not a key square. White to move does not win. Thank you for following. So white to move does not win. The key squares are c6, d6 and e6. Black to move must retreat his king, allowing the enemy king onto one of the key squares. Thank you for following someday. With white to move the position is drawn since he cannot move to any key square. So yes, we already know this position because uh, this is the battle for a position. If white to move, this position is drawn since black takes their position. But if it is black to move, white wins. So we can play out and see this. Um, King e5, black just takes the position. And if we push the pawn, it does not lead to much because black just keeps their position and in the end it is still made like that
So one moment, how to change the position? I'm using Leech's first time for analysis. A uh, board editor, I think. Yes, clear board. So next, king on b6, king on b8, and pawn on b5. So first, they have given some simple positions for us to understand the ideas. And they have marked these squares. With the pawn on the 5th rank, the key squares are not only a7, b7, c7, but also 6th rank squares a6, b6, and c6. White wins even if he is on the move. So in the same position, we have advanced it on the 5th rank. And now they say that this is winning for white. So first, first start with king a6, good move. King a8, b6, king b8, and b7. And this is winning because king c7, king a7, and white is able to promote. Note that first move king c6 is, is inaccurate because then black plays king a7 and white cannot make an improvement here because king c7, black plays king a8. Thank you for following Siddhant. And we can't play b6 because it's a stalemate. So we have to go back again king b6 and king a6. So this is what we have to do. I'm kind of expert in leeches studies. Can I help? Of course, Daksh. But to set the new position, I have to click on board editor, right? Every time. Board editor. Clear board. Next position. King D1. King F8. Pawn on B4. And now it starts getting interesting. White to play and win. Yes, king c2 of course. First we need to advance the king. The key squares are here a6, b6 and c6. The sensible thing here is to head for the square farther from the enemy king. Thank you for following read. So king c2 we begin. Good move. King e7. King b3. King d6. And king a4. This is how we have to go. If we go to king c4. Then black takes their position. And this will become a draw. Since pawn is on the 4th rank. So we have to go to a4, king a4, um, how do you identify the key squares? For example, in the last one, is there any way to identify that the 6th rank is the key square? So, as we understand from the starting position, uh, we have to see where our king should be to be able to win this position. So, they say the key squares are a6, b6 and c6. So, if our king in this position is on one of these squares, and regardless where the black king is, this is winning for white. So, that they call it as key squares. So we have to aim our king to reach one of these squares. So we go to king a4, king c6, king a5, king b7 and king b5. We get their position and next move we will reach one of these key squares and this is winning for white. 
So pawn and games are a big battle for a position. So getting the king on the 6th rank on any 3 in front of your pawn is a key square, yes. You're right. But our pawn is on b4, so we also have one spare move that time. That is why. Okay, so now next position. With these ideas, we have to try to find uh, the solutions for the next ones. Fourth editor. F1. King C8. Hello everybody, welcome. For those who are joining right now, we are doing an endgame series and studying endgames today. And we are going to continue with this series because it is very important to study endgames. And these positions are going to be very difficult, so we need to analyze them in details. And they are from the book Dovritz's Endgame. So now, first we have to try to get this pawn. So there are two ways. First is to go like this or just go directly. So what happens here? This is actually a composition by J. Moravec in 1952. King f2, king g3, king h4. So if king f2 black will play h4, that is the trick of the position that black wants to play h4 h3 and if you take with the pawn then it becomes a rook spawn and it's it's not possible to win with a rook spawn if black reaches the corner in g1 or king f2 so these are the two ways to do that So let's try king g1 king g1 is given as a mistake king d7 black's king successfully defends the pawn so let's let's move and see king h2 king e6 king h3 king f5 and black defends the pawn and we can't win this end game so let's try king f2 now if black starts playing king d7 we take this pawn and this is a winning end game for white so the best defense for black after king f2 um promote variation after king f2 is h4 now if we play king f3 it's a mistake because of h3 takes and now we have rook spawn and there are two ways to uh, draw for black with when there is a rook spawn first is to just occupy the promoting square or try to take an opposition so we go like that and it doesn't matter now that black has occupied the corner it is a stalemate no matter what That is why first move is king f2. After h4, white plays the brilliant move king g1. And this has been given two exclamation marks here. g4, you mean after h3. So let's try that one moment. King f2, h4. If king f3, h3, g4. Then black moves the king. And this is going to be a draw.
Yes. So after h4, the excellent move is king g1. And now if black starts to move the king, it's going to be a move late. And we get the pawn. And if black plays h3, now the good move is to not take it but to play g3. King d7, king h2, king e6, king capture h3, king f5, king here, and white gets the opposition. This was a very nice example. So first starting with king f2 and then we go to g1. Yeah, I mixed up because I have seen this study before. Yes, it's not easy. These uh, positions are all difficult. That is why we need to study them. And it's all about the key squares in this position and a position. Now here, next two positions are given as tragic comedies. So they are supposed to be funny examples. Look what, these are really funny, I will show you. So there is a section in this book called tragic comedies. Position is white king d3, king f4, pawn on d5 and pawn on d6. So this game is from Olympiad 1988 and here it is written that the lady playing white, Scotland's board 1, saw that she must lose the d5 pawn and therefore resigned. What can I say except no comment needed. So in this game, this was of course a very high level game played in the Olympiad and white resigned in this position. <laughs> Mommy giving a lesson. <laughs> You're quite funny. I wanted to start in game series because I need to learn in games. Of course, we all do. So, white resigned because white thought that um, d5 pawn is lost. And this was um, a tragic comedy because now. We know that this is the draw so let's see king e5 one moment how to make it black to play how to make it black to play oh it is here <laughs> i love lesson yes we have to study also we can't play every day <laughs> but i don't want to flip the board one second I don't want to flip the board. I just want to make it black to play. Okay, it just flips the board. I don't know why. When I select black to play. So now this is a draw. Because of the simple reason that black will play king e5 and we don't even have to protect the pawn. We just need to take a position. So we can play the king anywhere we want and whenever black captures the pawn, we just need to take the opposition. That's the draw here. King capture d5 and white takes the opposition. And this is a theoretical draw because now let's move and see. King e5, white keeps the opposition. And whenever we try to push the pawn, king d3, white still keeps the opposition until the end. And this is going to be a draw. 
so this starting position if we are in such position like this the only thing we need to know is that we need a position so it doesn't matter where we move the king actually we can move it anywhere anywhere let's say here and when the black king takes the pawn we play king d3 and that's how we draw this end game now there is second tragic comedy white king f3 black king g6 white rook on a4 rook f5 and black has pawn on f6 so this was a game between spielman and duras in 1907 so this has to be a draw but white hastily played here rook f4 deciding to exchange and go into pawn in game but this proved to be a big blunder because black plays king g5 look at this move and now white has to force the trades white has to take and king f5 and black gets the opposition if in the starting position if black takes it this is a draw because now white gets the opposition so we don't have to play until the end but White certainly missed this one move, king g5, and the game is over just in one move like that. If white plays anything else, let's say king move, this is uh, going to be a draw. Of course, we are going to learn about rook and games, but later. After key squares, next is corresponding squares. Yes, this was very painful loss. Just to lose in one move like that because of opposition. So now in corresponding squares it is given that corresponding squares are squares of a reciprocal zugzwang we may speak of corresponding squares for kings for kings with pawns and with other material we may speak of correspondence between any pair of pieces the most commonly seen cases of corresponding squares are the opposition mind squares and triangulation so they have divided this chapter in three that is opposition mind squares and triangulation so these are big words here we have to go through the examples to try to understand them hello james plunder welcome good to see you <laughs> nice hat thank you for that we are starting a series about end games and i'm starting from this book dovritsky's end games starting from the very first chapter and it's about pawn in games all right so now opposition so i will tell you what opposition is so board editor clear board So when the distance between two kings is 1, 3 or 5 squares, so all the odd numbers, we call it as opposition. Have a nice stream. See you. Okay. 
Badu, thank you for joining. Now, when I'm teaching about a position to my students, I have invented a game with this. Um, maybe you don't know it, but I will show you. This is a very interesting game. And I call it as making a goal. It's like football. So what I do is I arrange the kings, king e2 and king e7. Analysis board. And I ask them that if you are white and you have to reach one of these squares and I am the goalkeeper, I'm black and I'm goalkeeper. And if you reach one of these squares, you will make a goal. And this is an instructive lesson about a position. And it's not so easy to do that actually, to reach one of these squares when I'm stopping the king. So let's try it. So uh, they just go straight forward. Let's try like that. E2. One moment, this is still black to play. All right. Yeah, this is really fun. But this clearly understands the concept of a position. King E2, why can't I play King E2? Oh, I can't play from here. Okay, I will just add a pawn just for the sake of this. They don't allow me to play with two kings. Yes. Let's pretend that this pawn is not here. Yeah. So king e2. I will play king d8, let's say. Your goal is just to reach this square, one of these squares, and try to make a goal reaching the end. King e3, king e7. Move the black king and create some position by losing a move. Yes. If you go just straight forward, it's I'm stopping you and you can't make a goal and my king is stopping you and black king is like a very good goalkeeper yeah, forget about the pawn I can't set up the position without the just with two kings so I need it so let's start from the beginning king e2 king d8 instead of e3 needed to be f3 I will play king e8 Very mo every move is important in this. If we miss even one move, then black stops successfully. E4, King E7, King E5, King D7, King F6, and now white reaches the end and makes a goal. Yes. So there is a trick in this position. And that is in fact called as opposition. So opposition is called as the distance between two kings of one, three or five squares. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So first move we have to take the opposition. And now the squares are one, two, three, four, five. It means white has the opposition. Black plays king d8. Now if we play king d3, it's a big mistake. Thank you for following exciting trap. King d3 is a big mistake because now black gets the position. 1, 2, 3 squares. And now wherever you go, you cannot make a goal in the end in this position. King e3, black will just keep the position of 3 squares. King f3, king f7. 
king e4, king e6, and one square remaining. So in the beginning position, we have to count the squares, king e2, king d8. Now either we have to take an opposition or make a progress like this with king f3. And this word is called as bypass. It means that we just pass the king and black king cannot take a position. So let's say black king will play to e7. Again, we have to count the squares 1, 2, 3. So to take the opposition, we have to play king e3 or to make a bypass with king g4. Black has to play in a tricky way like this. Now the squares are this, king f4 or king h5. If we play any other square, it's a big mistake. If we play king f5, king f7 and black stops. If black, if white plays king g5, king g7 and black stops. So let's say king f4. Now again we have to count king e4 or king g5. One. So king f6 or king h6. Here we just pass. And make a goal. But uh, let's say I arrange the position in a different way. I will um, clear board. So this is the starting position again the same trick we have to make a goal in the end and the answer to this is that we have to count the squares we have to count the squares so let's see one two three four five so the only correct move is king b2 all the other moves are wrong and if we start the started start this position with king a2 or king b2 it's actually a wrong and we can never make a goal. So it's quite fun, you know, when I give such positions to my students and they start the game like play king a2 and then they can never make goal even if they play 100 moves because black takes their position. So if you play king a2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The best move for black is to play king a8. And now black keeps their position no matter what. King b2 again. The best move is to play king b8. King c2, king c8. If king d3, 1, 2, 3. So king d7. King c3, king c7. And this is endless. And white can never make a goal in this position. King c4, king c6. So the idea is that we need to keep the position of 1, 3 or 5 squares. Now what about this position? What about this position? Forget the pawn, it's just there. It just exists. It's not valid in this position. But now what about this position? How to make a goal in this position? So again, only way is to count the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So king h2 is the only move in this position if you want to make a goal. If you start with king g2 or king g1, it will never happen. So we start with king h2. Now black has to give up their position. So let's say black plays king g8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we can't bypass because there is no file next to h5. So we need to keep taking their position. Again, king g2 is only move in this position. All the other moves will give up uh, and we can't make a goal. So king g2. Black will keep playing tricky way. King f8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we have two options. King f2 
or this bypass progress like that king h3 king g7 one two three again correct move is king g3 if we are too excited and play king g4 it's it's a draw or yeah it's a draw black stops you king g3 one two three black plays king f7 one two three king f3 or king h4 so let's make progress like that in g4 we have one square and now we have to keep taking their position only move is king g5 now king h5 or king f6 and we reach here and we make a goal so this is the game i invented to understand this idea of a position thank you for following ellipse and this is very important concept when we are studying pawn in games but now we know about this we can proceed now i will win so many games i hope so too rook trapper king b5 black king b7 pawn b6 and pawns on a4 and c4 with white to play no it's black to play one second This position is black to play and draw. So black has to start with one of these moves, King A7 or King C7. So it is here said that one move is correct and one move is wrong. So what's the difference with both of these moves? We need to understand that first. After two days, hello Akshay, welcome. Not after two days, yesterday we, we did stream at night. In fact, it was a very long stream. For 8 hours, I streamed yesterday playing this shield tournament. From 10.30 uh, at night and it went till like 5 o'clock in morning, 5, 5.30 for me. But just playing is not enough. We need to also train. That is why we are starting a new series about end games. Privia Genie, welcome. So now we need to understand why one move is right and one move is wrong here. White will try to exchange one of the pawns with c5 or a5. Mostly with a5 because if you try to exchange with c5, you will end up with the rook's pawn. Thank you for following Winbin. Today is Topi Day, yes, I need my thinking cap today to think about such complicated endgames. 
so now why is one a square wrong king a7 let's try king a7 white has to exchange one of the pawns if we place king c6 we just play king a6 and it does not achieve much king c7 then king a5 or king a7 king a7 i think king a7 yes and you see we have this opposition which we just learned black has the opposition so white will try to exchange one of the pawns king a7 a5 black has to take white gets the opposition king b7 king b5 king c7 king c5 and now in b7 white has two options again a position and to make a bypass king d6 and this is a winning end game for white again you can take a position and this pawn will promote now he gets a key square on d6 you're right so king a7 is a mistake and we have to go on c7 right yes king c7 is good given as good move and the difference is that now a5 is not so good a5 we take we play king c6 and we get the opposition leading to a drawn end game So again we go back, king c7 is the move and if white plays c5 then again it's a draw because white have white has a rook spawn it means the pawn on a file or h file so even if you have it it's, it's a draw, king b5, black just occupies the corner and no matter what you can't win this position it's a stalemate in the corner so in this position king c6 is good move thank you for following match kill horse so king c7 good move white played king a6 king c6 King a7 and yes king c7 is given as good move king a8 and you will not believe but king c8 is the good move keeping the opposition and white cannot make progress if instead of king c8 if we had played king c6 again it's a mistake because of king b8 king c5 king b7 and this is a winning end game because now black has to give up this pawn and now even if it's rook's pawn black's king is not in the corner it is far away so it is winning so all the moves are very important king c7 sorry where is king c7 line thank you for following Nirup nirupam das so King c7 and after that we keep the opposition king c6 king c7 and king c8 yes very nice position now next one Now they have added a note here what happens if we move the same position one file to the right so let's try it thank you for following renaissance ombre so i will move the position same position one file to the right side and set it up
Chess is a very complicated game, yes. You could study all your life and still not finish all the chess studies. That is true. We just we will just try to learn as much as we can. And even if we study, um we can forget it, of course. But important is to understand the ideas and not just the positions. The same position just moved one file. Now the difference is that there is no rook spawn. That is why this will be winning for white even with the same moves. So black played king d7. And now this is simple winning because of the big difference that it's not a rook spawn. White will just play d5. Captures, captures, king c7, king c5, king b7, king b5. And white gets their position. And this pawn will promote so the big thing was that one of the pawns was a rook's pawn in the previous position now next King g2, pawn on f3, black king d1, and pawns on e5, g5. Thank you for following Silent Killer and welcome. This is white to play. You are also from India, welcome. Today we are doing a series about endgames. Starting with pawn endgames. And here it is white to play and make a draw. So what is happening here? This looks similar to the previous position. I was learning end games and Kohli got out in the opening. <laughs> On Rook Trapper is following chess and cricket same time we have right now indian premier league of cricket going on all right so what is happening in this position why to play and draw first of all we don't have rook spawn so it won't be easy let's start with king g3 let's try king g3 King e2 King g2 King e1 So this does not work And e4 So black's idea is to go from the behind like this and try to attack the pawn what if we start with king f2 king d2 again the same idea and takes the pawn let us try king f1 taking their position thank you for following as a dress let's try taking their position like this Is g4 possible here? g4 takes e4, g5, e3, g6, e2 check, 
yes g4 is possible g4 takes check king moves queen and just win like that so king g3 does not work king f2 does not work not even king f1 there is only one good move in this position and it says that it is king h1 can you believe this move thank you for following Kicho Mancho. so this is the only move in this position which makes a drop it's a position again with three squares in between and now we have to continue to take their position let's see how it works uh, if black plays king e1 then we play king g1 if here if white plays if after king h1 one second hmm. If black plays g4 with the same idea that we saw before, there is king g2. And if king e2, then we take it. If king d2, yes, we take. And now there is no check, so we promote at the same time. white promotes at the same time so after king h1 black plays king d2 and again the move is to keep their position with king h2 king d3 king h3 and this is a draw a very surprising solution but all about a position and black black does not make any progress we just keep taking their position like that King d2 then the move is king h2 and this continues and etc so we have sideways opposition also yes of course the opposition is not just in like this it can be file ranks or sometimes even diagonal opposition also diagonal oppositions are quite rare but they exist but they exist now next is the composition by h mattison in uh, made in 1918 White king h1, black king h5, pawns on f4, g5, and black pawn on f7. And surprisingly it is white to play and draw white has two pawns an extra pawn but black is going to take the pawns in king g4 and king f4 soon So let's try the king moves let's try all the moves king g2 
black place king g4 f2 takes and black takes all the pawns and this is winning for black because even if we take their position like this black has a spare move with the with the pawn so black plays f6 and white has to give up their position and we know that this will this will win for black that is why even though we have extra pawn this is still about making a draw If we defend even one of these pawns, it's going to be a draw or to take a position in the end. Welcome lad, nice to see you. If we start with f5 again, black will just take both the pawns like that. So, the correct move they say is first move g6. Very interesting move. E6 and now black has two options to take with the king or with the pawn if black takes with the king we, we are just in time to support this pawn and we support it and we can even give up like this because we have the opposition so first move g6 King g6 will make a draw, that is why black will play f capture g6, fully mode, yes, thank you. <laughs> and now f5, double exclamation mark, thank you for following Hablush, f5 double exclamation mark. Now black takes this and we have to keep their position. We already have their position with three squares and if we play king g2 we will give up. So the move has to be king g1. And king f2. Let me check. Let me check. g6 fg f5. So first move g6 f fg6 f5 here king g2 is a mistake because king g4 and black gets the pawn and even if we get the opposition black has the extra move here with the pawn so that does not work and here if we play f5 black just takes gf So this does not work. So the answer is g6, fg, f5, gf and king g1. This is very important move to keep their position. King g5 and king f1. Now black cannot take a position because his own pawn stands on f5. And now wherever he plays, we have to take their position. King f4, king f2, white gets their position, black does not have an extra move with the pawn and white will make this a draw. It 
it's a stalemate so the answer was g6 takes f5 followed by king g1 and king f1 is this from your own study no this is not my positions we are just training about end games from this very famous book it's Doretsky's end game manual We are just training about in games. Oh no, not that book. Why? What happened? What happened? This is a very famous book and we have to um, we have to go through this book at least once. It is a highly recommended book. Next position, king f1, white uh, pawn c4, d5, black king 7, pawn d6. Yeah, this is very complex, but this has very complex positions, very difficult. But we will, we don't have to try to solve all the positions, we have to just try to analyze them and even if we understand them, it can help us very much. Thank you for following Duper. This is a composition by J. Retina, 1907. White to play. White to play and win. Thank you for the cheer, Doper, and welcome. So the beauty about pawn and games is that they have very less pieces, like just two, three pawns, and yet they are so complicated. Even one move can change the result of the entire position. And going by the statistics, uh, they are the second most positions seen in practical games. The first is of course rook and games. Uh, from the statistics about end games, the first, the top end games which are seen most frequent are rook end games, and second is pawn end games. Now king moves to d4. Let's try it. King e2. And first, also we need to understand what is black's defense here. King d4 and pawn c5. Let's say I play king d7, king d3, I just wait, king d7, and now the problem is that if we play here c5, black gets their position after king c7. It's a stalemate like that. This looks very complicated position. Maybe we have to try for try to go from the king side. I 
black should have played king f6, right? King f6. And then just go king e5. So no need to go back even. We can make a round from a file. So let's go back. Let's start with king e2. King f6. So let's go with king f6. Maybe king d3. King e5. Now c5 is not possible because of king d5. So king b4. King d4. Again c5, king d5. King b5. Yeah, this is winning for white. So there must be better defense for black. For this. Okay, so let's see the analysis it's very complex um it says taking the opposition with king e1 leads only to a draw so what happens after king e1 black plays king e8 good move king e2 king e7 king e3 king e8 king e4 king e7 so black so for black the defensive idea is not to go for pawns but just to stay on the 7th rank and keep their position somehow. And white cannot get any closer because the e5 square is off limits. Yes, so if we try to go from here, black will keep the king on this side. That's what black will do. And after king e1, king e8, if white tries king f2, black goes king f8. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a position. King g3, king g7, king f3, king f7. So this is all about a position. So now we at least understand what is black's defense here. So let's again try going to the A file. Let's go King E3, King E2, sorry, King E8, King D2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, King D8, King C3, King here, and it is not possible. So this is the black's defense, and black keeps the opposition no matter what. And that is why our first move is very important here, it says. It is king g2. After work party with Rucha. Welcome chess to go. Believe me, this is not a party here. Fun in games are no party. King g2. And this is the way. Again, uh, in that game about making a goal, we know that we have to either take a position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with king e1, or try to make a progress like that. So, here we have to play king g2. King f6. It is necessary to maintain a position, therefore, again, 1, 2, 3, king f2 is the move. King e7. Uh, moving the king forward is useless. If he plays king f5, king f3, king e5, king e3, king f5, king d4, and c5. Yeah, 
can we play this position what do you mean if i'm missing some line you can tell me i will play it here of course um so black plays king e7 and now we know the formula already one two three we have to play take the opposition or try to go to the other side so white goes king g3 king f7 again one two three king f3 king e7 we have these options king g4 king f8 one two three king f4 king e7 king g5 king f7 and king f5 white gets the opposition and wins the game so let's see black plays king e7 we play king g6 and slowly we invade and we get this pawn i am white you black so from the starting position okay let's try it if you want to try some other line of course we can do it instead of king g2 you mean okay so king e2 I will try to keep their position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I will go to e8. d2, king d8. Have you recovered from 8 hours streaming? Yes, I am. And I'm all, all, already ready to work on my end games. d2, king c8. what's up with the red hat i need my thinking hat today to work with end games b3 so now one two three i will play king b7 b4 in b6 Hello Genius Chess, welcome. What's your chess.com username? It's uh, rootchess27, both on leeches and chess.com. No move, you're right. Uh, now here, if we play king a4, king a6, and now there is a way to trick, of course, to play king c3. And here king c5 would be wrong. I think so, it would be wrong. Or maybe not. Yeah, it, it may be wrong because now we get the opposition like that. So it's a way to trick black. But the best way of tricking c3 would be to keep the opposition. 1, 2, 3. And just simply play king c7. And just keep this opposition. And don't try uh, to go after the pawns. <laughs> Today we will have a 12 hour stream. No, no. So, I think we can safely go to the next one. It's all about a position. Black, uh, white king e5, black king a5, and pawns. 
a3 c4 6c5 a4 white to play and win this is a composition by sackman 1913 I remember this was position given to me in one of the chess camps and I did not find the answer that time. <laughs> yeah, I was given this position in one of the chess camps but that time I did not find the answer actually. Are you doing the classical shield arena? Yes, today is classical shield arena. Tournament of uh, 20 plus 10 for 10 hours. I don't know if I will do it today. Maybe not. Let's see. White already has their position. These three squares. can't be d6 so if we directly go to d6 black plays king b6 and defends both the pawns if king d7 king b7 king d8 king b8 so this is black's defense i i think i understand the idea so it has to be this position uh with white to play if the same position with white to play then black has to give up one of the pawns we have to reach this position with white to play so if black king is on b6 and when we play in d6 then we get one of these pawns so we have to find the trick how to get that position with uh, black's move For example, if we play a uh, first move king e6, black cannot play king b6 because we have king d6. That is why black has to play king a6. Something like that. We need to find the trick about it. My endgame technique is more than horrible. Don't say that just to go. That is what we are training about. We need to train about it. King must move b3. 7 moves b3 but b3 is controlled by black yes it has to be triangulation on e6 yes you are right we can use that idea of triangulation somehow at least this is what i think i have i don't know the answer i'm just thinking that we need this position with white to play somehow
let's try king e6 black has to play king a6 again keeping their position if we play king e7 black goes king a7 king e8 then black goes king a8 and again we can't make any progress here Thank you for following Rizwan. Okay, so um, e6, a6, f5, a5, and e5. Yeah, this, if we get the same position also, it is good for us. Hello, Kola. Welcome. We are doing an end game series about uh, end games, fun end games today. And this position is a white to play and win. King e6, king a6, king f5. So black does not, black will not play king a5. What if black plays king b6? Yeah, we need to find triangulation to reach this same position with um, with black to play or with this position with black to play somehow. What about king e6, king a6 and maybe king f6? This looks interesting for me. So black will maybe play king b6. Still no progress. King f5 then. Yeah, this looks interesting. One moment. King e6, king a6 only move. King f6. If king a5, then we have king e5. If king b7, be king e7, right? King e7. So black plays king b6, we play king f5. And now if king a5, then we have reached the same position. If black plays king a6, we play king e6. If black plays king c7, we have king e6. This looks like solution for me. This looks like solution. Hello Mantrala, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We have started endgame series today. With very complicated endgames from this famous Doritsky's book. Yeah, I think that has to be solution. King e6 here, king f6, king f5 and king e5. Let's see the analysis. No, this is not right. This is not right. In fact, it has to be other way around, starting with king f5 and that like that. So here it says, first move, king f5 is a good move. King b6.
king f6 king b7 king f7 keeping with their position king b6 king e8 king a7 king e7 king a8 king d6 king here here and king c8 is winning one moment but let's try what we thought about King f5, king b6, king f6, and this is the way. So I will go in the starting position. I will start this stockfish here, and let's try to see what happens if we play first move in e6, like we said. King e6, king a6, king f6, king b6, king f5. King a7, what a move. King a7 is a draw, it says. Wow, king a7. If we play king e6, then king a6 and keeps their position. We completely miss this move, king a7. And that's a draw. So starting, uh, king f5 is the only move. f5, king b6, king f6. And we keep their position again, like we studied before three squares and then again here we have option one two three to play king f6 or king e8 keep their position and then we win he retrangulates you <laughs> you are right you are right we completely missed that black also has the idea to make a triangulation like that thank you for following Saulo, which but this is a very difficult solution. Now next is a section about tragic comedies. So let's see what happened here. White king is on b1. A rook b4. Pawns a3, b3. Black king d5, queen on d2, pawns on d5, a4. Black to play. And this is a game between e8 and Tata Kovar. So black is a famous player. In 1927, greetings from Mexico, greetings to you from India, and welcome, Solovich. And in the game, Tata Kovar played Queen Capture B4. Thinking that it's a winning pawn end game. So, what happens after Queen B4? White takes. I see now. I see, I see. King C2 is not possible because of this. One moment, let me see again. So in the game Tata Power played this. Queen capture B4. A B4. And did he play this? A B A B King B2. King C4. And instead of King B1, there is just King A3. Simple move. This is just simple move, King A3. 
and king c3 is stalemate and when black plays b2 the correct move is not to take the pawn but to play king a2 black had missed this move when he traded off the queen he had hoped to win the b4 pawn and seize the position but miscalculated after king c3 king b1 king capture b4 king b2 the draw is obvious so one second what happens if white goes king b1 and c3 i guess right no what am i missing king b1 king capture b4 king b2 Oh, we just go from this side we don't have to do that so king b1 does not work that is why in the game queen b4 after this white played king a3 what a move and king c3 it's a stalemate b2 was played and the great move was king a2 I would never have played king a2 there. Now by white king playing a2 he is able to delay and find a position. Yes, what a beautiful move this is to find in the game. And of course a data cover missed this when he calculated this line. And takes the position. Otherwise this end game it is said is to win is to be very uh, completely winning for black. Let's turn off the engine now. There is one more tragic comedy. Thank you for following, Dare Dog. Can you promote and get the opposition back? Let's see. B2. Here, right? Thank you for following. And welcome. Can we promote and get a position back? So here, if black promotes, king takes. We can get the opposition, but we need to get the pawn. And white will just wait until you take the pawn. And when you take the pawn, he just takes back the opposition by king b2. Yes. I like tragic comedies. Even though they are very unfortunate, there is so much to learn from it. Next, white king d4. Rook g5. Pawns g3. h4. Black king. e6. Rook f3. Pawns f7 g6 h5 this rook is on g and this is black to play how could we find more right move when tardakor did not find that so this is a game between yusupov and uh, Jubo Jevik 1992 and it says here white's rook is tied to the defense of the pawn at g3 black would have won easily if he had transferred his rook to a3 to prevent the white king from approaching the pawns if king e4 then f5 so they say that black should have played rook a3, king e4, f5 check. And um, king moves. And king f6, this is winning, they say. A 
Okay, let's not get into Rook and Games right now. Let's just agree with the analysis. So instead of that, Jubojevic played Rook F5. What book have you as reference? We are studying from the Dobretsky's Endgame Manual. This, of course, you must know this book. So in the game, uh, Rook F5 was played. And they say that this is a blunder. Now why this is a blunder? This is not so obvious as the last positions. But Rook F5 is blunder. White played King E4. Rook captured G5 and HG. Black decides to go into this pawn in game thinking that it is winning. But looks like that, right? Because Black has an extra pawn, the pawns are doubled. So Black went for this pawn in game instead of that Rook end game. That's Bathur's book? No, this is my book. <laughs> this is mine. So, let's see what's happening. King, uh, White has the opposition, but Jubojevic had counted on f6. So he had calculated f6. White took the f6. King f6. King f4 g5 check and Yusupo played here king f3 and it became clear that a position on f file would give black nothing since king f5 is met by g4 check wow so this is what he missed he, cal he had calculated king f5 but white plays g4 check. Wow. This is very difficult to find. hg, in g3, king moves. And white takes the pawn. And also, uh, this position is a drawn endgame. So here, Yusupov realized that... Um, no, black realized that Yusupov had g4. And instead decided to play king f7. White played king f2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Why king f2? Let me see. King e6. King e2. Now he gets the opposition. King d6. King d2. King c5. King e3. And it's a draw, they say. So the idea in this position that was missed in the game, that was g4. This idea. When the kings are here, king f5, there is g4. Very beautiful move. When will you achieve your grandmaster title? I have already have two women grandmaster norms. And I'm just waiting to make my third norm soon. When I can start playing again. I will definitely... Uh, I'm definitely working for it. He's already GM in our heart. Thank you, just to go. You are very kind. So now we have uh, five exercises on this chapter. So let's do that. And then I will go to have dinner. Let's complete these five exercises. White king b2. Black king a4. Pawns on a2, b3, black pawns on b6 and b5. And they say it is black to play. And just question mark. We don't know if it is win or it is draw. Just black to play. But 
It looks like we have to find the draw. So if we play b4, if white takes, it's an easy draw, we just take it and we don't have to calculate that. So the line we need to think about after b4 is c4. I think I found it. It is b4. We have to find the draw. So b4, c4, not b5 because c5. If we play b5, there is c5 and king b3 and we will lose the b4 pawn. So after c4, we have to sacrifice this pawn like that. But let me think if it's right. Because if white takes, we play king b4 followed by b5. What if white has here a3? So, instead of this, white plays a3. b5 there is c5 so also this is not clear let let us think little bit Why not king a5, king a5, king b3? King a6, then king b4. What are we missing after b4? Then let king into b5 and defense, right? Oh yes, you are right. This was some similar position that we saw, right? When white spawn were on a4 and c4, king takes on b5 and we reach king b7. So something like that we can try. But white spawns are still on c3 and a2. Let's try this directly. Now the difference is the pawns are not here. Which we saw that was a draw. But the pawns are quite behind. And this can be advantage for white. This can be advantage for white.
you for following xmark only you need to change pawn in f so what to do maybe b4 and b3 thank you for following mr aromic maybe b4 b4 b3 a3 maybe this position are we going for this position i don't know i'm sorry not king here e7 maybe this this might be it similar to position that we already saw let's check thank you for the cheer mantra i appreciate it so much The solution of this exercise is based on the ideas we saw. So first move here is b4, c4, b3 good move. Here king a5 loses because of king b3, king a6, king b4, king a7, king b5, king b7, a3, king c7, king a6, king c6 a4 king c6 king b8 okay this is a very long line let's check the main line so now white plays a3 king a5 king capture b3 king a6 king b4 and king a7 yes so we found it right king b5 king b7 here white has only one spare tempo, while in the other line white had two. A4 and we remember we solved this position, king c7. Here we discussed that black had only two moves, this and this. King a7 was a mistake because of a5. So we play king c7 and this we reach the same position. King a6, king c6. King a7, king c7, king a8, king a8. But you are right, Tamil lad. This was the idea we had to go for this one. Now, second one. Hello, Alex. Welcome. <laughs> nice hat. Thank you. So, second exercise. White king f3 on g2 on b4 black king g5 on f4 and on b5 this is white to play <laughs> i was right just give me the norm Yes, you you reminded of reminded us that we saw that position before. So we just had to find a way to transpose to what we already learned. Thank you for following Elfi curve G3. So let's calculate G3. Black takes white takes in f5 and this is going to be a draw and even if white gets the pawn we know that we just we can even give the pawn and we just whenever white takes it we have to play king b7 it will be a draw so let's go back so g3 will not work for us so it leaves us with this option e4 i'm thinking king e4 and maybe king e5 here let's just try going for the pawn let's just check this line first so takes takes 
and in fact black queens a lot earlier so we can't go for the pawn on the queen side so we go king e4 first move king g4 king e5 black has two options f3 and king g3 hello pandit boy welcome hello masood so f3 and king g3 we need to calculate uh, let's pick one so f3 takes and now the difference is we are quite ahead in time we just take this and we will promote so this does not work for black black will play king g3 king f5 and i think this has to be solution if takes then king f4 if black plays f3 and then we are in time yes looks like that for me i will check the solution king e4 is the first move king g4 wait we are wrong here we are wrong how should white continue if he managed to pass the move to his opponent he could force a favorable pawn exchange on the king side we just missed that if white played king e5 black does not have to play this black can just play this in g5 and just keep defending wow i missed this move really in g5 and just keep defending the pawn and there is no progress after that we just saw these two moves in that variation so here the correct move is king d5 one second so king g3 what are we missing one moment hmm Let me check with the engine. I don't see what's happening. King d5 is the right move, it says. But what if black plays king g3? Oh, now we have to go king e5. Of course, not for the c pawn. We have to go here. And when black plays king g4, king f6, like that. We just have to go behind this f pawn. And then we try to exchange it. Now I understand the idea. I thought this was a simple position, but it's not. It is not. The answer is king d5. King h5. And king c6. King g5. This is very tricky. Oh my god. So, king d6, king h5, king d5, king, king d5, king h4, king e6, king g5, king e5, king g4, king f6, and king g3, king f5. That's very deep line. That's too too difficult. But okay, we just need to understand the idea. Even if we don't calculate the moves, we have to try to understand the idea that we have to go for this F1. Going for this B1 is wrong. So we just need to find a way to get that a position and then a right opportunity to go for that pawn. <laughs> yes. It surprises me that positions with only kings and pawns are so complicated, right? 
Now third one. I will solve the five exercises and then I will go for dinner. No dinner for me until I finish this chapter. Clear board, white king, h2, rook c5, knight f2, pawn on f3, black at 7 rook b2, bishop d8, and pawn on a7. This is a white to play. No dinner until I finish the book. It will take me many years to finish this book. This is Dobritsky's endgame book. Of course, you all know it. We are starting from the very beginning. So now this is um, white to play and win. So has to be some transposition to pawn in games or some similar ideas that we saw. What is this position? Why to play? It's good that there is no minus 30 for wrong answer, you're right Alex. That's a big relief. To avoid that, we have to work so hard on the end games right here. One moment, I don't think this is white to play. It is written here white to play, but is it? Yeah, King G3 is first move. King G3 good move. Now maybe Rook F2. Or Bishop B6. So Bishop B6 can be defended by just Rook check, I guess rook h2 no so now black has rook f2 and bishop b6 we need to calculate these lines Yeah, we need to watch out for bishop b6. Let's see, let's see. Alright. So black played here rook capture f2. Black played rook capture f2. If bishop b6, maybe 
we can defend it with rook h5 and rook h2 maybe okay just knight d3 just knight d3 what about rook h5 check it also is equal and again knight d3 this is a bit bad so just knight d3 and white saves so in the game black played rook f2 let's put this off rook h5 check king g6 rook d5 bishop b6 rook d6 king f5 rook capture b6 rook capture f3 check and the main point of this position is to understand that we have to play here king g2 instead of taking the rook king g2 a b and next move we take this rook with the opposition so now king moves we take the opposition like that and it is going to be a draw this was quite difficult but just the idea here is that when after rook f3 we need to play king g2 followed by king f3 so fourth one and fifth one is very interesting but let's go by the number i will go for fourth one first King a8, a6, pawns on b5, d2, c7, c7, and f5. Come on, yes, these positions are very difficult, I know. But it's it's just trying to analyze them. Not we don't have to try to solve all of them, just go through them and understand the ideas. One moment. Uh, so white king is on a5. First move. First. Yes, if you're going to study a book like this, Dorotsky's end games. Of course, we can't expect to solve all the positions. The idea is that we set up the positions, we think about them, and then we check the analysis. That's how we how we are going to do it. So first move b6 I don't like because of king b7. So we can start with king a6. Black has king b8 and f4. And then we can try b6 probably. Maybe that that might be the beginning. If we play any other move like g3 or b6, king b7 and the king is... Uh, in time to defend the f5 pawn so let's start thinking about king a6 and now black has f4 and king b8 f4 b6 king b8 
so let's see the yeah, first move is king a6 it's it's by logic logically the best move if first move b6 is a mistake because of king b7 that we saw black plays king b8 here they say if black plays f4 b6 is winning now how is it winning let me think if black plays king b8 king b5 probably king b5 king b7 then we take takes and king c5 yes king b5 king b5 then king b7 then we take and we are in time to take that pawn so after king a6 black plays king b8 Where is that? And now here g3 is the good move. If white plays b6, the hasty b6 misses the win, they say. b6, king c8. b7 check king b8 g3 c5 king b5 king b7 king c5 king c7 king d5 f4 good move and king d7 sorry king d5 was here here was king d5 d5 and then king d7 taking the opposition so let's go back after g3 black plays king a8 b6 king b8 king b5 as we said king b7 bc king c7 King d5. This time white has seized the opposition, therefore the pawn sacrifice f4 is senseless. So even if black sacrifices now, white has the opposition. Oh, so difficult. So difficult. Alright, so last one for now. This, I love this problem very much. Next one. I don't know all the solution, but this is very nice. This is like a puzzle. So the position is king a1, king, C, king a8, and rook c1. This is the starting position. And here it is said that mate black with just one move by rook. So this is a puzzle in which you have to mate black king. But you are allowed only one move by the rook. You can play the rook only once. This is very beautiful. Again, it is about a position. You can play the king as much as we want. But rook can move only once. Let me try to remember too. I saw this puzzle many years ago and I remember I was very happy to know this puzzle. Yes, now I remember. Hello chess master, welcome. You can go to c file with the king, but again it's not so easy. Again it's not so easy. 
Yeah, you have the right idea. Just we need to find the right moves. King A2, King B8. Do you play classical shield? I'm thinking about it. Should I play or not? It starts in 10 minutes, right? But it's a very long tournament. It is 10 hours tournament. So I'm not sure if I will play. Maybe after my dinner, I can think about it. Do you have a schedule for your transmission? So far not, because I just started streaming recently. It's been just 15 or 20 days since I started streaming. So I still don't have a proper schedule. But what I want to do is that um, I want to do everything. So I want to play in tournaments, I want to train, which can improve our chess understanding. So it has to be all uh, it has to be like we cover all the aspect, not just one. Please try to play and stream classical shield. Okay, I will think about it. Yesterday was also a very long stream, eight hours, and this is more than that, ten hours. Thank you for following Death Satar. Thank you. This is a very nice hat. I like it too. Second to last move is King C7. Yes, you are right. You are right. Welcome, Death Star. What is your rating? My rating is around 22, 50 or 60, something like that. I'm a woman international master from India. those who are joining right now this is the puzzle in which white has to checkmate black king but the condition is that you are allowed to move the rook only once you can play only one rook move and you have to checkmate the black king Rook c7, you are only allowed one rook move. So if you play it, how can you checkmate it later? You can move the rook only once. This is the puzzle. How do you improve? I've been playing for about a year and stuck for around 1100 rapid and 1300 classical. I think if you want to seriously improve, you have to train every day. And not just play, but also work on middle games and end games and openings, like in a very serious way. I would suggest uh, right now that uh, you should make a habit to solve tactics every day, no matter what. This is uh, very important uh, to improve right now. And even for me, 
I used to do tactics every day and I still do. So that's where you can start. And then as you get more time you can spend on end games and opening. So these are different aspects in chess like opening middle game and end game and uh, also about learning classical games and playing games. So I observed that most of us we try to spend our time. Uh, thank you for following. What, what we do is we spend our, our time in just one direction. So it's like either we just play every day, we play blitz, we play rapid, but we don't work on other things. So it has to be balanced and then we can improve our entire game. Hello Ringo Boo, welcome. Alright, so you can move the king first. Of course we have to start with the king. But the um, question is what to do with it. Now today before this we talked about a position and this puzzle is based on that. So one, two, three, four, five. Correct move is king a2. And if you play any other move, it does not work. So let's try with the wrong move first. Let's try king b2 first. So black will try to take their position. One, two, three, four, five. King b8. And we can try as much as we want, but still it will not make any progress. King b4, king b6, king a4, king a6. If we go to c4, black just runs away and then there is no checkmate. Just runs all over the board. So that is why a position is very important. And the correct move is only one, that is king a2. One, one two, three, four, five. Now black plays, let's say king b8. Again, we need to take the opposition by 5 squares and that is king b2. Black will try to play king a8 again. And now we need to make a progress. That is where we play king c3. King b7. 1, 2, 3. Again, correct move is king b3, not king b4. King b3. King moves to a7. We make progress with king c4. King b6, king b4. King a6, king c5. Now if black plays king a5, there is checkmate with one move, that is rook a1. So black goes behind, here or here. Let's say he plays king a7. Now again king b5 is a mistake. Black takes the opposition, king c6. King a6 would be met by rook a1. King b8. King b6. And here we have mate with one move. Rook c8 mate. So this was all about a position. And every move we have to be very careful in this puzzle. Thank you for following mass. So every move we have to be careful. Even if one move wrong, we can make... Even if we make one move wrong, this is not possible to win in this puzzle. So king a2, let's say he plays king b7. We just need to calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, not king b1, so let's make 3. If you go king b8, let's say if you go king a8, we can take a position again b8 king b4 and then mm, if king a8 here have king c7 and this checkmate okay there are many ways to play it i just tried to show the pattern that is a position that's it for this puzzle so we finished this uh, chapter about a position and we will continue with this series. This is something which is going to help us to understand endgames more better. So I will continue with this series. And uh, I hope to see you in my next streams. Hope you have a great day. And I will catch up with my dinner. And maybe I will stream more tonight with something else. Not endgames, of course. 
Maybe I will play some tournaments or games or I will decide after my dinner. So it was great to have you all and see you next time. Let's make a raid. Say hello to somebody. One moment. Let's see who all are streaming right now. Okay, let's rate our good friend Nandini. Bye everybody.